Hello there viewers and welcome to the third episode of Shed Adventures. Now what you see here is a huge array of knives. I sent my grandson on a scavenger hunt round Shed Adventure headquarters here to see what he could come up with and he came up with well a vast array of various knives. Um, he also came up with uh, my rusty my rusty old chopper here, um, which isn't a knife. However, I thought it would be quite good just to quickly talk about this. So this has been hanging around the shed here and the garden for about 35 years. You can see that the, that the handle is gone and we just have the tang left. So this could be 70 years old, 80 years old, who knows. But the interesting thing is, even with the rust, it's the quality of the metal. And I've just been sat here with a stone, just putting a, an edge on here. And the difference, you you can hear that if we do this with something else later on, you can hear the difference in the sound. I don't know what it is, whether it's the carbon content in old tools or, or old metal knives or old equipment. Um, but the metal is always, to me, of a better quality. Um, harder takes a lot to get an edge on it. When you've got an edge on it, it'll hold it for a long time. And I can just feel the quality of that blade. And it's absolutely razor sharp and will just slice away chunks out of that wooden table with no pressure whatsoever. Um, so what we'll do with this is we'll restore this. We'll do a program on turning that back into a usable tool. We'll put a lovely ash handle on it and we'll do our best to uh, clean up some of the rust. Now, before we talk about knives, I want to talk about the legality of it all. Because there's some knives that I used to carry as a young man, which are now very illegal. So, um, selling, buying and carrying knives and weapons. This is straight from the www.gov.uk. Uh, maximum penalty for adults carrying a knife or weapon illegally is either four years in prison or an unlimited fine. So it's serious and there's a whole list of um, what you can and what you can't do. Now, and there are knives that you mustn't even own, even if you keep them in your shed, even if you keep them on your private property, they are illegal to own. None of these knives fall into that category, but this is interesting. So here is a beautiful rosewood handled lock knife. That word lock knife is important and we'll come on to the length of the blade. Now this belonged to my grandfather and he gave me this and I treasure this knife. And I have had for years just carried that round in my pocket when I was doing the garden. And it, you can hear it lock. It's a brilliant knife. You can take cuttings with it. You can do all sorts of, all sorts of things, but there's two issues with it. The first one is the length of the blade three and a half inches you can only have a three inch blade and the second part is it's a lock knife it is held in place by a spring or a catch so that can no longer be carried in public and because it's so easy for me to slip that into a jacket pocket while I'm out gardening then decide I want to pop down to the local shop or or, uh, or the petrol station or something and I could very very easily and very innocently have that in my jacket pocket and I'm then carrying an illegal an illegal knife so that now stays in shed HQ and doesn't go outside um, very quickly I want to talk about a piece of iconic design and probably in my view the most dangerous knife that we've got here the Stanley knife oh yes what a piece of brilliant design when it first came out. However, I have taken more people from work to have stitches done at the at the A&E than I can think of with any other reason. Slips, trips and falls, anything. Stanley knives, I don't know statistics. If anyone does, please tell me, but I consider these an absolute menace and an absolute danger. And you've all probably got one at home in your toolbox. So please, treat them with a great deal of respect and only use them for the job they're, in, they're intended for. So we'll put that aside as well. Now, we've got a few other interesting knives here. We've got this little beauty here from Sweden. Um, 
and we have this, which is a knife, although as you can see it's curved. Now what are they for? Well these are craft knives. And what we would use that for is something we'll talk about later. That is carving ourselves a beautiful wooden spoon or a spatula or some other implement out of wood. So you can see that with the shape of this, you can very easily work your way around that. And with this beautiful knife, you can very easily carve yourself a lovely handle that fits in case of this one literally like a glove look at that um why wouldn't it it's designed to fit the hand that holds it uh what we'll probably do is talk about this in another episode probably in the dark when it's winter and um we haven't got anything more interesting to do outside so we'll get rid of those craft knives as well we'll get rid of our stanley knife dangerous knife we'll get rid of our beautiful clasp knife and we're left we're left with this pile. So let's start. Um, let's start with this, of all things. So this is a souvenir. Uh, this is uh, an AK-47 bayonet. So you wouldn't be taking this out in public. Uh, of no real use around the garden or the house. It's just a decorative object. It's a souvenir. Um, what you can actually use it for is um, you can turn it into a wire cutter. Insulated there. Bakelite handle, so if you're cutting a wire that's actually got live electricity, I am assuming you're not going to get a, uh, a cut. But this is nothing but a weapon, a weapon of war, um, not very pleasant. This would fit, obviously, on the end of your AK-47 assault rifle, uh, and it's a stabbing weapon. Interestingly enough, it hasn't even got a blade on it. You can't see, but it's actually flat two millimetres of flat steel there. They're only interested in is that point and it being a stabbing weapon. So, an interesting souvenir, but of no use to us. Now, let's talk about these two. This is actually a Royal Marine issue item. It's huge and it's heavy. Um, even the massively over-engineered, even the leather sheath that it comes in, scabbard, is, is heavy and over-engineered. And what is this? Well, unless a Royal Marine wants to uh, get in contact with him and tell me otherwise, I don't really view this as a weapon. I view this as a, a bushcraft tool, um, something that you use when you're out in the Bondukes, um, as part of your camp craft. It clearly isn't a stabbing weapon. Yes, um, you could obviously thump someone with it, but it just doesn't feel, doesn't feel right. Um, clearly it's been used, or it's had a hammer, so I could imagine splitting logs with it, bashing it into a log, then hitting it with a hammer, or it may have even been used as a hammer itself because it's big enough. It does carry a good blade, uh, and certainly I could see yourselves deployed to Norway uh, and using this to cut down trees or small small trees, make yourself twigs, splitting wood um, and just general camp craft um, rather than an actual fighting weapon. So hugely heavy um, and certainly not because of its weight and its size, certainly not a favourite of mine. Now, so that doesn't really get the vote. Now let's look at this beauty. So this is a cookery, and it really is the genuine one. This is an army issue cookery. So if you joined um, the Gurkha Regiment, in this case, I think this comes from the Gurkha Transport Regiment. This is what the British Army would issue to you. And if I pull this out, we have this. Now, that in comparison to that, the difference is, is unbelievable. First of all, this handle just, just fits into your, just, it's like a glove. It literally is. And clearly this is something that has been designed, designed, developed, has grown over hundreds and hundreds of years back in Nepal as, um, I assume, a fighting weapon. 
a hunting weapon, but also an amazing um, tool if you want to use it in bushcraft. You could chop a bit of a tree off with this, but it is just hard work. Whereas the way this is weighted, the, the, the actual blade and, the, and the, the knife just does the work for you. It's an absolute pleasure to actually hold in your hand and you can cut down bits off tree, you can shave off bark. Needless to say, it has a beautiful edge. Interesting little bit there, you can see a, a little indent just there. So if you were, as I'm sure the Gurkhas did fight with these, and you were fighting, and your opponent brought his knife along your knife, it would lock into there. So it wouldn't take your hand off, just a little bit of protection. If it slides down there, it's going to catch in that little that little indentation there. So you can see a knife that has developed over hundreds of years and is just a beautiful, um, not design, there's no CAD drawing for one of these, but a beautiful development of a tool. Um, so let's just cover some other things that we've got here in the shed. Now, here we have, basically, before you had a multi-tool. This is designed for sailing. I used to wear this on my belt when I was sailing. Nice pair of rusty pliers. Marlin spike for doing rope work and undoing shackles. And a knife. So number of issues now with this. First one, obviously, I think you can see, if we measured this, we're over three inches. So in all innocence, you would be on your sailing boat. You'd have that hooked onto your, onto your belt, jump off the boat, run to the clubhouse, get a cup of tea, go down to the chandlers, get some nuts and bolts, and you'd be carrying an illegal, an illegal knife. So this now lives on the boat, doesn't live on any, anyone's belt, and it's used on the belt, on, <laughs> on the boat, and doesn't come off with anybody. You have to be these days extremely careful um, in what you take out um, and take into the public domain. And here's another example. I had this for many years. Um, as a shackle, again, it's a sailing. This is a Swiss Army knife. Two issues with this, locks into place. Did you hear that little click? It has a lock mechanism on it. So not only is it now classed as a lock knife. Yeah, three and a quarter, tiny bit over. So this, which I used to just throw into my sailing jacket pocket, has had to be put into the into the pile of we can't carry these anymore so what's that leave us with well out of this great collection it leaves us with three knives your original 1960s swiss army knife this was before you had any form of multi-tool this is what well it's like they use these on everest chris bonington had one um doesn't lock there's no on this model so it's not a lock knife and clearly that's a small blade has everything else you could want bottle openers pliers scissors corkscrew is a is a cracking still still a cracking little knife and then these two fellas so let's start with this one so this is navy issue was navy issue maybe still issued um, these days i don't know issued to me um, for an expedition to the Antarctic, I think in um, early early eighties, little screwdriver on there, Marlin spike, obviously navy, doing shackles on the ship and rope work, and um, a blade. I think the blade's okay. Yeah. So. Under three inches, doesn't lock. Navy clasp knife. It would, in its day, had this lanyard. You would have put the lanyard up over your arm. 
tucked it inside your epaulette to keep it up there and drop that into the top pocket of your um, navy jacket. And very similar, this little beauty, which I love. Um, I'm assuming this is stainless steel because there isn't a spot of rust on it. That was issued to me in 1978. This is the, this is the army version of this. I can't describe the difference in weight. This is, it has to be pounds and this is ounces. Um, army jackknife. Nice little blade, super, super holds an, a lovely, a lovely edge on it um, and has all the tools that a man, a man could want serving in Germany in, uh, in the late 70s, which is an opener. For tins, everything came in tins in those days, army rations, no ring pulls, and of course, tsh, or tsh, um, a vital bottle opener. British Army of the Rhine, eight years in Germany, never sober for a minute. Fantastic time. Um, and that's what you get issued, or you got issued in 1978 by the army. Um, I still carry it today. It's still legal, or it is legal. Um, and it's a lovely little weapon, and clearly there's a few memories um, that uh, are attached to that. So out of that, out of this bundle of knives that are hidden away in Shed HQ, oh, and this pile here, maybe minus the copper, um, these three, Stanley knife potentially could take outside. Um, but these three are the only legal knives that we can go on an adventure with. So when we do go on an adventure and we go camping or we go climbing or we go canoeing or sailing, um, these will be the only knives that you'll find in our, in our pocket. Now, finally, let's talk about sharpening. Um, many videos on YouTube about sharpening and I would direct you to, to any, any of them. They're very good. So I will give you um, my own version. So there's two types of blade. So here we have a chisel. And what you'll notice about a chisel is it's flat on the back. And you can see the chamfer, 35 degree chamfer on the front. So these are sharpened in a very specific way, about 35 degrees. This is uh, an oil stone. You can get a wet stone. Um, you can even make your own out of a bit of wet and dry sandpaper and wrap it around a, a, a nice flat block of wood. You push away like this, you must, must try and keep the angle the same. About 35 degrees is what you want. So when you've been doing that, you will have created a burr. And with a flat blade like this, you then lay the blade flat and just take that burr off. And what you end up with is, yeah, a, be a beautifully sharp, sharpened chisel. So planes are like that. Spoke shaves are like that, chisels are like that. Knives, on the other hand, tend to be, as you would think, sharpened on both sides. Um, so again, 35 degrees. You can sharpen it in a number of ways, depending which, what suits you. that simple um this little beastie here is very useful um, for bigger tools like my rusty chopper where you can just sit there take it in the field with you and if you're doing some work or you've got an axe let's get ourselves a let's get ourselves an axe oh here we are that's what you call an axe and if you're in the field and you're working with that, you really want to have this in your pocket and then you can just hear the ring on that. That's good quality steel. Really is a beauty.
Lovely. So, there we have it. Ooh. These are the knives available in Shed Adventure HQ. And a little bit about how we look after them uh, and what we can and cannot take outside. And I can't stress, and you've all seen the press, strongly enough that um, knives are something to be taken seriously and looked after. So, um, fun to own, got a bit of history. That, my grandfather's, but sadly um, cannot, cannot leave um, Shed HQ anymore, which is a shame, but there we are. So, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe, and please come back with um, any ideas about what you'd like to see in our in our next shed adventure. We have lots of ideas. Um, we have up here an English longbow. How do you make an English longbow? You may ask. Well, we can show you how to fletch an arrow. I have an arrow back here, and we could show you how to fletch it. Here we have our our sailmaker's kit. And we could talk, and there's a sailmaker's palm, and we could talk long and in detail about stitching and the way you use yarn and the way you use beeswax and what they used to do in the old days and stitching a homeward bounder, which we'll explain as a nautical term. There are many, many things we can, uh, we can cover. So if there's anything particular, let us know. What I do plan is to get out some tents a bit of fun. We have some some 60s tents. These are quite rare nowadays. So I want to look at those. And we have some expedition tents um, from the 80s and ge geodesic dome tents. So I want to really do a compare and contrast uh, about the, the items we use in the 60s uh, and some of the more modern um, items that uh, we use from the 80s and the 90s. And the geodesic dome tent still stands the, uh, the test of time today. So thank you very much. Um, I hope you enjoyed this fairly short episode of Shed Adventures.